Welcome back. So I'm going through a high level overview of the chapters in this Control for Societal Scale Challenges Roadmap 2030 document. This is a really cool collaborative effort by dozens of some of my favorite control theorists on planet Earth to outline what are the large societal scale challenges that we humans face and how is control theory central in solving these challenges in the future. So today I'm going to zoom into chapter four, emerging methodologies. And these are specifically kind of the big emerging methodologies in control theory that are at the frontiers of research that are driving new and advanced capabilities in control that we can use to solve some of these societal challenges. Things that are going to make our control systems learn better from data, that are making our control systems more robust and higher performance, more resilient, things like that. Really cool chapter. This one's pretty uh, close to my own uh, research activities and interests, so it's something I'm really excited about. If you know me, you know that I'm gonna have probably you know dozens of videos on subtopics in this. But again, I highly recommend you to download this roadmap uh, read it yourself. You can, I'll put a link in the description below uh, and read this chapter because there's a lot more here that I'm not going to be able to tell you about. I'm just giving you the mile high overview in this video. Okay, so what are the kind of pieces and subsections here? We're going to talk about learning and data-driven control. Again, something very near and dear to my heart is how does the interface of machine learning and data-intensive science advance our data-driven control capabilities? Huge area, hugely exciting. Big challenges here. How do you make learning systems that are certifiable, uh, that are trustworthy, that are explainable? These are things we're still wrapping our heads around, but these are where we need excellent people like you to be working on these solutions. Uh, safety critical systems. Again, we need our systems if they're going to be solving societal scale problems, if we're going to be deploying robots all over the globe or autonomy, we need these systems to be safe and, uh, and kind of verifiably safe, trustworthy. There's a lot of uh, aspects and subtlety to how to develop safety critical engineering systems uh, that are discussed here. Really, really important. Something you know I uh, am excited to learn more about in this roadmap as well. Uh, resiliency is kind of another side of this coin, that if we have these large sale, scale societal systems and infrastructure, we need them to be resilient, Assess, especially cyber physical systems. Uh, how do you use control theory to design these resilient cyber physical systems? That is an emerging set of methodologies that's going to be critical in solving societal scale challenges that we discussed before. And if you want to see any of those previous uh, topics of what are the societal drivers, what are the technological trends, those videos uh, have already been released, and so you can check those out uh, to give context to this chapter which builds on those. Uh, similar to cyber physical systems, we have cyber physical human systems. Uh, this has been a, an important area of control theory research for as long as I've been in the field. Things like you know human robot interactions and things like that. Really interesting and important uh, area of research. Whoop. I think I went too far. Uh, and then control architectures. This is something I actually have only recently learned about from some of the collaborators and colleagues that are uh, authors of, uh, of this roadmap are things like how does the foundational design architecture, how you design an engineering system and the control systems that interact with that system, how do those architectural choices affect things like resiliency and performance and robustness. And so I've learned a ton from people like John Doyle and others about how architecture is really a foundational concept in control theory, especially in the future of control systems where you're going to have layered architectures, tons of complexity, abstraction. It's a really cool area. Again, something I've only recently learned about in the last 12 or 24 months, but it's changed my entire way that I think about control and engineering system. So very, very cool. Highly recommend that you read more about this. I'm going to only zoom in on a couple of these, right? I'm going to probably talk mostly about learning and data-driven control because that's my bread and butter field. But again, read about this yourself. Get up to speed on what these uh, emerging methodologies are. This is kind of the new tool set you're going to have access to to solve those challenges. 
So learning and control go hand in hand. Um, in my book, Data Driven Science and Engineering with Nathan Kutz, you know, we advocate that control is inherently a data driven uh, discipline because you're taking sensor measurements and you're changing the system and then you're measuring how that system changed and it, there's data in kind of every step of the system. And so in this kind of abstracted control system diagram, there is opportunity for learning, for data-driven learning in the modeling side. When we do model predictive control, we can use machine learned models to model those dynamics and then do classical control things with them. We can apply our learning directly to the controller. This is kind of the machine learning reinforcement learning perspective. Can we use intelligence in our control design directly and interface with complex environments in a complex real world? Learning can also be useful for sensor and actuator placement and processing that data. Lots and lots and lots of opportunities for learning in control. Again, I have dozens of videos on this specific you know, subsection, but I highly recommend you read uh, the perspective in this roadmap because it'll give you the perspective not just of me, but of dozens of excellent researchers. And you know, I think that this is, this is well-known science that when you have a diversity of opinions kind of taken collectively Collectively, you learn a lot more than if you just have one person with a lot of opinions. <laughs> Okay, uh, so reinforcement learning, super exciting field. This is kind of uh, exemplifies this, this marriage of control and learning. This is a field that's been around for decades, really old, really rich field. But just in the last 10 years or so, there have been some incredible advances in reinforcement learning. And I think we're only going to see this trend increasing in the next decade. Okay, again, I have a short video sequence on reinforcement learning that talks about kind of what are the controls challenges, what are the, the machine learning challenges, what are you know what is solvable today that wasn't just five years ago, and what do we think will be solvable in five years? So reinforcement learning, super exciting. Again, it's learning for control. Uh, this is an old one, actually. This video, you know, can you teach a robot to imitate an expert human? That's a type of imitation learning. This is, again, something we've been doing for a long time, for decades, but the tools are so much better than they were. We have better sensors, better data, storage and transfer. We have faster computers, uh, lower latency, better robots, better sensors, better actuators, kind of all of this is advancing at an incredible pace and it's really driving our capabilities in learning for control. Uh, you know, autonomy is an area like, um, you know, like this that, that is this really going to be driven by machine learning. So we have lots of examples of physics-based control systems. Uh, robotics is a great example. Increasingly, they are incorporating learning into, into the control design and how they work with unstructured environments. Self-driving cars is a pretty good example where it is largely learning-based and learning-driven, reinforcement learning and vision-based and things like that. Uh, and we've said for a while, you know, I have a lot of collaborators in the aerospace industry, that future systems are going to need kind of the best of both worlds. And when you put a learning-based controller on a plane or a car or in a robot, they had better be kind of physics either informed or constrained, explainable, trustworthy, safe. There are these really uh, essential characteristics we need these controllers to have for them to safely uh, integrate into societal scale deployment. And you know that's going to drive advances in how we do machine learning and how we do machine learning for control. Really, really exciting area. And then I'm just going to throw this up as a last example. Um, this is different from learning for control, but just as a teaser for architectures. Architectures uh, in control theory is a really powerful concept where you think about how do you take a very complex system and abstract it into layers that interface with each other through some kind of common agreed upon interface so that each of those layers can be independently optimized and tweaked and, and played around with. So a really good example of a kind of common agreed upon interface is the 110 volt 60 hertz uh, power interface that you know all of our energy resources funnel into this standard 
and then all of our devices feed off of that standard. So this is a nice example where you can optimize and do all kinds of things before and after this layer, uh, but this kind of interface allows these things to work together. And so um, I've heard examples of like a smartphone, you know, it has a hardware layer, it has a software layer, it has the operating system layer, which is what the human interacts with, which is just a thin piece of software on top of the software layer. And these are all abstracted, so the hardware can change, the OS can change, and, and things like that without the other pieces necessarily having to change. And so the idea of a layered architecture allows you to get the best of both worlds of performance and robustness. If you have performance trade-offs, you might think about introducing new layers into this architecture uh, to exploit the different uh, kind of characteristics of the constituent pieces. This is a huge area, something I'm still learning about, but uh, I truly and firmly believe that this is going to change how we teach controls, how we design control systems, especially at scale for multi-physics, multi-scale problems. Uh, so just a teaser, but I think this is super cool. Architectures are changing how I think about control theory. Uh, okay, so that's chapter four, emerging methodologies. Very, very cool. You know, this is all the sci-fi advances in control theory. And so, you know, for you young or old, junior or senior researchers, right, like this is kind of where we're going. And so it's exciting. Uh, and I highly recommend you read about these from the world's experts, you know, who, who crafted and, and wrote this, this very nice chapter. All right, thank you. <laughs>